Oh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, of course, not everyone, only those that are where it's actually afternoon. Uh, for everyone else, good whatever time of day there is. Um, let me know if you've seen this before, right? Uh, imagine like you have your legacy code and it's not giving you all the speed you need. Right? That the world has changed, you can feel it in your styling, you can feel it in your build, you can smell it in the code. Uh, then you find brand new technologies and your team is eager to adopt that. Uh, everything's pretty amazing, you can do things you haven't been able to do before. And yeah, except they are not super familiar to you. Um, you let your teams decide what to use. At some point, the best technology wins, everybody's happy, and now you at least can start delivering your features. Business is always, uh, you deliver, business wants new things, shinier things, and some, somewhere along the lines, you have a little bit of discrepancy. Some technologies are different here and there, different ways of doing things have appear, uh, your team grows, uh, features grow, and you start seeing discrepancies here and there, but at least you're delivering and things are evolving and growing. Fast forward 10 years and you have yourself a new legacy code. My name is Jason Santos and this is how I used to dress to impress enterprise clients. I mean, and when you could actually meet them face to face. And I worked at Rango. Um, you probably know uh, who we are. And uh, I'm here to talk to you a little bit about uh, some of the awesome things we did in partnership with SurveyMonkey. But don't, don't get the illusion that I have done all these things by myself, right? Uh, there's an awesome, awesome group of people that helped me a lot and like that did this most of the work actually while just keep here taking the credit. And uh, seriously, they're some of the most fantastic and smarter engineers I have ever worked with. Well, but first, let me tell you a little bit what this presentation is about. Um, we're going to talk to you uh, about what is SurveyMonkey exactly, what's Rango exactly, and uh, what are the problems we faced. Right? We're going to talk to you a little bit about what type of solutions we came up with to solve those problems. And of course, I'm going to show you uh, some of the code. Uh, okay, what exactly is this product we're modernizing? Right? Uh, SurveyMonkey has one of the first examples of software as a service in the market. Like it's a pioneer of Silicon Valley that helped shape that industry. Right? It it's, has about 1,200 uh, employees and more than 17 million users. Uh, they have product lines that include like market leader survey software and whatever type of, of market research, like quick polls, competitive analysis, customer feedback, you name it. They have like a large footprint on enterprise companies around the world and they have an impact that was massive uh, during the 2020 pandemic. Uh, they empowered communication across companies, engagement, all that good stuff that we are forced now to do from our kitchens. Um, yeah, it's great to have great software uh, to do that with. Now, for the shameless plug, uh, work for Rango, right? Uh, we're pretty known in uh, uh, the software development scene. Like, we're pioneers. Uh, on the modern web, and we are a very constant presence in summits like this. Right? Our team excels at creating new products and helping companies modernize and becoming more digital. Right? Uh, you probably know us. Like we, we've been sponsoring and presenting in many technology events uh, ever since 2013, and we are a consultancy board in Toronto, Canada. But now we have presence in multiple countries. In the last quarter of 2020, SurveyMonkey partnered with Wrangell in an effort to modernize some of their code bases into this brand new technological platform they were developing. The SurveyMonkey team was facing a lot of challenges to bring all their feature teams into that brand new pl web platform. And the biggest challenge may be the sheer size of it. 
and they you they used the best technology that was available and uh they were building that with some of the best and most mature devops practices that we have ever encountered it looked like they were set up for success on top of that they had developed this awesome design system like they're very cohesive and well-rounded based on solid design principles and implemented as a react component library with everything on it on and the cherry on top however now that they needed to migrate uh they had this big set of expectations of what that migration was going to do and um, together uh rango and sorimaki divide some of the fine tuning and some of the planning around how these goals were going to be achieved it all started with the problem statement right how can we make sure this migration is successful and that we can reap all these benefits at the end you start with the challenges right the sheer size of their product the high sophistication of it uh made it hard for us to really make sure everything was going to fall into place local complexity was the key element right uh it was really a matter of trying to figure out how each one of these highly sophisticated pieces was going to really come together as one platform the solution was a domain library maturing and rolling out wrench that was survey monkey's design system was a good strategy and to help like the feature teams become more productive and create like a cohesive look and feel to the application but it was just the start simplifying the feature code was possible only if some of the business and presentation logic on the features themselves were shared when the same concepts were used in different places domain specific code would be in charge of that section the concept is inspired in domain driven design and helped shape a library that could concentrate everything related to one of the most important domains at survey monkey the question now for the more concrete part the execution right first the process uh we divided the team into two different squads allowing the react developers to start delivering quickly and in the meantime have another group started creating the relationships and the alignment with the feature teams inside survey monkey to help like design apis and integration points the two tracks ran independently spearheaded by different solution architects that kept in constant contact one team one goal but the, with the ability to concentrate focus across the two dimensions right. on the design system side we have been able to refine and validate most of the governance model that empowered the feature teams and the domain library team to continue to contribute to that design system and keep it cohesive at the same time that by contacting the feature teams themselves we were able to bridge some of the knowledge silos and create a common understanding of the structure and of the problems the names were not super important but they needed to be aligned the important thing was with the abstractions in place we can not only communicate more efficiently but now we can reshape those same abstractions as as a single team one pattern emerged as a good way of giving this whole integration system the flexibility it needed and ensure the separation of concerns that will allow all the teams to move forward with the domain library the three-tiered architecture inspired by the capability pattern it consisted in separating the domain library in three parts the pure visual components of the domain the question type specific business logic and the interface with the specific needs of features most of the mechanisms were implemented using react contexts and typescript and the goal was to make sure the feature teams could implement question related user interfaces without deep knowledge about the particulars of each question type this is how we deployed the solution like three different packages were delivered as internal npm packages and one of them uh the question internals 
contained only the domain-specific visual components. Another library, the question definitions one, uh, contained the business logic types and type cards specific to one of each of the 23 plus question types supported by the SurveyMonkey apps. The third one, question bundles, included the capability providers and the visualizations that were actually the mapping between those two. They were feature-specific facades that allowed the feature teams to inject custom behavior and custom visuals into the domain visualizations. Okay. Um, enough talk. Let's see some code. This is one of the smallest components. Like right? it's it's super tiny, but it can show you the pattern, right? It's one of the key things that we had to support here, and one of the reasons why um, some of these components were very specific to the domain was the custom visualization of it. Like it's the ability to theme it differently in runtime. Um, we achieved that by having this separate file alongside each component that could give it some specific styling. Uh, but that would also change the way that styling worked based on the theme that was injected by the end user. This is a slightly different, but yet still very basic component. Uh, it's different from the design system version of the same component, like because of the ability for the end user to theme it. Uh, this is the rest of it. Uh, it's, it's a basic input and it's also one of the first iterations. Visual components are tier three, and this is tier one. This is an example of a visualization. Visualizations are non-visual components, despite their name, and they were designed to be one of the easiest things to write because you have lots of those. Uh, their structure is designed to really map the usage to the actual visual components and map the properties and if necessary, hold some state, right? It was also one of the hardest ones to name. Um, you can see the rest of it here, like the single text box question field is a visual component from tier three. And you can see that the visualization maps some of the external properties that are the way the feature is going to call them to the internal ones in the visual component. And the last bit is uh, the visualization declaration. That helps the overall engine to select which visualization is proper for each capability and question type. So one of the most important aspects of the strategy was to make sure that the code that was going to be written many times was extremely easy to write. So this is one capability provider. Uh, we tried to make sure that the end user didn't have to spend a lot of their time preparing the types and setting parameters and things like that. So for that, we created a bunch of helpers, like a lot of helpers that allowed uh, someone to simply use uh, this factory here with a list of visualizations and then TypeScript will infer the types for the external capability provider uh, based on the visualizations that were selected. Now let's see some typical usage here. Uh, this is how you would use it on the application code. Um, you would get the uh, capability provider uh, somewhere in your code. And inside of it, amongst all your other visual components, you would have one single question controller. The single question controller would be replaced by the appropriate visualization, depending on what the question at the runtime uh, was configured around. Right? Uh, if you, for example, in this case, you have a single text box that will render as a single text box. And if you change to a comment box, it will change everything that can be changed uh, based on the data that's inside the question type. The question type itself is on tier two and drives what can be changed by each one of these things. The idea here is that this is an example of an evolutionary architecture. That's the main concept of, of this solution, right? What's an evolutionary architecture? It's an architecture that can sustain uh, 
changes and reconcile those changes without losing cohesion. Right? It's the antidote for having to do that again in 10 years. Right, this migration is still ongoing, but we can see some very important results uh, from the approach. The main one may be the response from the engineering teams. We received a lot of positive feedback and uh, uh, some of the engineers really jumped into the opportunity to really understand what was going on there. So one of the things that we really tried to drive uh, was to really create this collective ownership of the architecture, to really make sure that everyone could contribute to it and bring their problems so we could accommodate it. It's really important to have that flexibility. Otherwise, you will end up solving problems, but not the right problems. Okay, now the only thing missing is uh, the monkey pants. How do you call a group of very young monkeys that are siblings and keep yelling a warning at you all the time? Months. Oh, thank you all. Uh, hope you liked the presentation. If you want to know more, uh, join me for the QA.